Welcome to Tomahawk DIY everyone, I'm Mike. A few years ago, I posted a video showing how to find the center of a circle. And uh, turns out, a lot of people had that question. There were hundreds of thousands of folks who viewed it, and there are lots of comments on different ways to find the center, the center of circles. I decided to test a bunch of those. I gave 10 or about a dozen or so tries to see what I like best. I'm gonna show you all those ways. Stick around and watch that. JC130676 said, the much easier way, take a piece of paper, place it under the wood, then use a sharp knife to cut, cut out a paper circle. I'm gonna trace the circle, and then I'm gonna use scissors to cut it out. Then fold it in half twice, and where it folds is the center. And if we, he says if we cut off a tiny tip here, then that should give us the center of our circle. There we have it. Okay. Hizzy Voltaire said, I just stick a ruler on the circle, find its maximum, draw a line, let's say find its maximum, like that's about the maximum. Draw a line. Do the same roughly perpendicular. Let's try and find our maximum again. And there's the center. A little different than our paper method here. Now we've got to uh, Holen162115 says, eyeballing it's much quicker. Yep, definitely quicker. Um, John Smith says, uh, hey, Holen162115, eyeballing a circle center. Have you been sniffing glue? Hmm, is the question. Well, let's see. So I'm going to eyeball it and. You can call that the center. Okay, let's see. Felipe Pazzini tells us the classic way to do this is use a compass. Thanks, Felipe. I had to go find a compass. I didn't have one of those before. But if you have one, let's see. You can place the point of the compass on the edge of the circle. As long as your compass is big enough, it looks like. Let's lock that down. Place the compass on the edge of my circle. Got it falling off. Whoops. It went. That's about as close to the edge as I can get. Draw an arc that extends roughly beyond the center of the circle. Well, that's extending beyond the center, I would say. Keep the compass open to this length. Okay, I've locked in place. Place the point again. Yep place it right here. That didn't work so well. Let's try a different spot. And what does it say? At what is roughly the opposite side, draw another arc. The two arcs will intersect at the, di at the diameter line. Repeat a third. Let's see here. Not sure what it means, repeat a third, but let's try that. Whoops, not like that spot. Try right here. The two arcs will intersect at the diameter line. Well, let's see, the diameter is a straight across my circle. So, I guess maybe by the diameter line, I mean like this. That would be the diameter. Um, Let's see, which one of these was the good one? That's the bad one, this is the good one. Run that through the diameter again. And let's see, but what happens if I go like this? Let's see, there was that one. So what if I run it like that? I'm not quite getting this whole diameter line thing. Because I can make 
intersections all over the place here. However, let's see. Carmel Poulet says, heartiest congratulations. It is a very elegant method. Well, it didn't work out so much for me. Actually, when you draw the first arc that cuts the circumference of the original circle at two points, then that cord joining those two points are at right angles to a diameter. So one only needs one arc, really, as the cord is easily halved. Again, congratulations for such a solution. Described as geometrically beautiful, gracefully concise and simple, admirably succinct. Wow, that is quite the praise, Carmel. Let's see if we can add a little insight to what Carmel said. So I'm gonna draw my chords again. There's one chord, I'm sorry, my arcs, not chords. Where is it? Ah, I fell off again. Keeping this compass on the edge is part of the challenge here. All right, now we're gonna ignore this arc right there. Pretend that's not there, okay? So what Carmel pointed out was draw a chord, I believe, I believe that's what Carmel's saying. Um, the chord that joins these two points are at right angles to a diameter. So then the chord is easily halved. Well, let's see, how easily is that halved? So it's eight, nine, nine and a half. Well, that's convenient, nine and a half. What's half of nine and a half? Let's see, that would be four. 0.75, four and three quarters, I believe. Right there, is that right? If I do another three quarters and then another four, one, two, three, four, yep. That looks like it. Okay, so that's the center point of my cord. I think he's saying I can draw this at a right angle and find the cord. Well, or find the center. Well, yes, you can, but I don't really know why we had to draw the, draw the arc to begin with. So I think if you draw this through here, yeah. All right, Felipe and Carmel, that's uh, some great ideas here, but I will tell you, I don't like using the compass, at least the way I'm trying to figure it out because it keeps falling off the edge of my circle. Um, if I get it too close, and then, yeah. We'll just move on to the next one. All right, so Joe S. says, you measure the circumference with a flat tape. So here's my flat tape. I'm gonna measure my circumference. Then you divide by four, getting four exact quarters. Let's see. If I can get my tape to stay on. It's a little tricky getting this tape. I'm not very skilled at this. Wait a minute. Starts at the number two. Uh, that's probably some fancy measuring tape because it starts at the number two. So we'll just have to deal with that. All right, this is a little bit tricky. 32 inches divided by four would be eight. I need to put this around. Since this tape starts kind of funny, I'm just gonna start at 10 right here. Come around to 18. There's 24 here, 32 there. And I've got a problem, I think. 32 plus eight should be 40 inches. I'm like an inch and a half off. All right, let's just try that over. I don't like this measuring tape route. It's a little bit tricky here. So maybe I'm just not very skilled at it, but. So coming back here, Joe S, what did you say? You draw two lines from one side to the other to get the center. Well, there's one line. There's two lines. I don't have much confidence that I got that quite right. Sorry, um, I don't like this method. Kind of struggled with that. But it was worth a try. I like the idea, I like the concept, but it didn't work for me. Okay, Mr. Carl Newman says, there's a much simpler way. 
put the point of the square on the circumference. Angle does not matter. Make a mark where the outside of the square crosses the circumference on both legs. Join them where the lines cross is the center. Not the center. Not the center. Right now, that eyeball method is looking a whole lot better. Let's see what happens if I use a different square. Let's try the same thing here. One there, one there. Join those together. Like that. Nope, this is our old one, this is our old one. Old one. Now let's try coming over here. Got the point of my square. Make a mark there and a mark here. Draw this together. Well, now that's much more interesting, right there, isn't it? Oz Skiz says easier way is the same method but drawing a square and draw a line from each point where the lines cross is dead center. So I think what he's saying, or she, is draw a square. To get a square, let's see, we're gonna want two sides the same length. So seven and eighth, seven and one eighth, okay. So get my square. Let's come to this side. I think I'm gonna have a problem. Here's my seven and eighth. Oh, no, it's still seven and an eighth. We're getting a square. That's looking maybe it's Oz, you might be onto something here. Alright. There's seven. Following that line. Seven and an eighth. Look at that. Well, I think that one's looking pretty, pretty darn good. Well, I think that one looks pretty good, Mr. Oz. So, I like that one. I'm just slightly tricky getting my sides. Let's try another one. All right, Naf Sharp says, why not just fit your circular work into the 90 degree angle of your square? So that would be like so. Put this into the square, then slide your 45 miter degree square. Slide this one down and draw a line. You got that? I think that's what he's saying, or she. Repeat two times to find the center. Wow, I don't like that one so much. Maybe the problem with this one comes as I lose my, my angle here, because really, it, looking like that, Looks like it lines up much better with the center. So, I think the concept is there on this one. But I think I gotta be really careful to be sure down here at the point is not overdoing it because I've got my sloping, because um, the speed square is kind of sloping up. But going back to um, going back to the hole in one six two one six two one one five, it is going about eyeballing it as I eyeball here. You know, that seems to get pretty good. So, Sooner Science Nerd says I just make three marks anywhere on a circle. One, two. And three. Find the center between each mark. So let's see, that's 
just shy of seven inches. So the center would be just shy of three and a half. There's three right there. Whoops, set. Like so let's find the center of this one. So it's somewhere right around there. So Sooner Science Nerd, if I'm reading this correctly, you're just saying, take my square and draw like that. And come on this cord and draw like that. And come on this cord and draw like that. Which really, I believe is the very same thing that's where I started with drawing three chords, finding the midpoint, and drawing a right angle to find your center. So, thank you, Sooner Science Nerd. RT6 string says just use the inside of the carpenter square against the outside edge of the circle. So, here's the inside of my carpenter square against the outside edge. Touching at two points, and then put a speed square to the point where the carpenter squares converge. So I think, let's see, looks like it touches right about there. And it looks like it touches right about there. So I believe what he's saying is that now we take our, this square, run between those two points, and I think he's saying that that should be my center. That doesn't look like the center to me. What did I do wrong? Yeah, something doesn't jive with that one. Um, maybe I'm getting, not understanding quite what you're saying in the comment, but anyway. Nick Dianuzio says, if you don't have a square, balance a disc and a nail point or something, etc. will give you the center when the balance is level. So, we're going to take our nail. Okay. We got a nail stuck through here. It's not in the center of this circle. Now we're going to try and balance this thing. Nick, I like your concept, but boy, this is hard to get a balance just right. That's pretty close, you know. And right there. Came up right there, so pretty close. All right, thanks so much for watching Tomahawk DIY. Hope you found it helpful. Um, please subscribe, like the video, leave some comments. Let folks know what your favorite ways are to find a circle. And uh, check out my other videos. You can see my original one. You can see my consolidated version. Um, we've got lots of great stuff. Tips and tricks for doing things around your house. Have a great day.